Welcome to the Blue Security Podcast, a weekly podcast for information security defenders, where we bring you discussions on best practices, tools, and implementation for enterprise security. Now, here are your hosts for today's show, Andy Ja and Adam Brewer. Welcome to another episode of the Blue Security Podcast. I'm Andy, your host. I'm Adam, your co-host. So there have been a lot of announcements recently with Microsoft. And even for me, as someone who works there and kind of deals with this on a daily basis, it can be confusing and it can be a little bit complicated on how some of these pieces fit together. Mm -hmm. So today we're just going to give a quick overview on a lot of the new announcements that have happened, some of the new products, some of the new rebrandings of old products and some of the stuff that's in public preview associated with anything within security, including like identity, um, endpoint protection, threat intelligence, all that stuff. So we're not going to dive super deep and, you know, understandably like Adam and I both are in this space as sellers of some of these solutions, but we're not going to really like push them. We're just really going to give you an overview of what's there and maybe even some of the competitors in that space, if it's brand new or if it's not. So first off, Let's start with identity. So back in 2022, like this year in May, there was a blog that was written where it talked about Microsoft Entra. And so Entra is the new brand that Microsoft is using for all of its identity. So if you see or hear anything that is called Microsoft Entra, know that it relates to identity specifically. Under Entra, there's essentially three different solutions. Azure AD, which has not been rebranded. It's not like called Entra AD or anything like that. It's just Azure AD is still there and everything's still the same. Um, It just kind of falls under this umbrella of Entra. And then there's two other things, decentralized identity and then cloud infrastructure entitlement management. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is part of the acquisition of CloudNox that was purchased in 2021. We have... rebranded that as Microsoft Entra Permissions Management. And just a quick overview of that, it's a comprehensive solution that looks into the permissions of different identity providers or uh, cloud services. Right now, it's multi-cloud and it can integrate with Microsoft Azure, AWS, or GCP. So you can onboard like an AWS account or an Azure subscription. I'm not sure how GCP is organized, but you know, like a tenant level GCP uh, instance, and you would be able to then see all your users and what roles and permissions that they've had. And a lot of use cases would be like, if you have an over permissioned user who hasn't used that role for a while or hasn't done anything, um, you can grant abilities on the fly or on demand, kind of like a privileged identity management solution. And we're not the only ones in this space. There's a lot of other ones. Um, big ones in this space are like Palo Alto's Prism, uh, CyberArk, One Identity, and so on and so forth. But it did get a lot of hype. This type of product, this cloud infrastructure entitlement management, got a lot of hype because last year Gartner released this hype cycle for IAM, and it's saying that this particular product is on the rise. So um, there's that. And then the second part is verified identity, which is... Microsoft's Entra Verified Identity. And this works on the concept of decentralized identity. And we could do a whole show on this, but just the highlights of it is essentially it uses blockchain to store that identity. And so the blockchain is something that either an organization or a user can hold onto as part of my identity. So one of the use cases that are touted, like for example, would be If I graduated from the University of Wisconsin-Madison and Adam, of course, loves touting Iowa State, um, you know, if each one of these universities had um, a way to verify us in our own personal blockchain that said yes. Um, So the university would be the, um, it would be the authority in this case, signing off on the assertion that you're a graduate. And then I could take that and then give it to like an employer and they could verify that through the university without even knowing, um, you know, with my blockchain, just my public key 
because it's been asserted and signed by the university itself. So without any knowledge of myself, they could find out my assertion as a graduate just by verifying that. There's a lot of other things you can do, like if you're a citizen of a nation um, or um, an employee of an organization, stuff like that. So this is fairly new stuff. It, it is being used today, but certainly not as prevalent as I think where a lot of uh, folks want it to be, but it is part of the future. And you can create essentially verified identities within Azure AD. This is not like an extra charge or anything like that. This is just part of Azure AD and it's a service and you can do that. So like I said, we can do a whole show on it, but those are the three things that are within Microsoft Entra. So I actually really appreciate kind of the effort to unify things under different brands. I know Microsoft marketing <laughs> takes a lot of slack for renaming products, sometimes with really obtuse names, especially, but I like kind of the clarity around, for example, all of Microsoft's compliance solutions are now Microsoft purview. So it's like Microsoft purview information protection, Microsoft purview e-discovery as an example in the threat protection space. It's all defender, Microsoft defender, for Office 365, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, Microsoft Defender for Identity. And so now on the identity side, it's all Microsoft Entra, except Azure AD, which makes me suspicious if maybe that's coming, but want to build some more equity in the Entra brand first because that's such a critical product. And then even in the privacy space, Microsoft Priva, in the employee engagement space, Microsoft Viva. I'm, I'm seeing a lot more consistency around like brands tying to different product categories. And I think it's one of the best things Microsoft marketing has done in years. And yes, I know who signs my paychecks, but still, um, even though there is pain and discomfort with like adopting new naming conventions, I think long-term this makes a ton of sense and I hope they stick with it because it feels much more consistent moving forward. So love the Entra brand. Um, and, and so these, these new acquisitions, you know, decentralized identity, I think is still really early days. I mean, you talk about quantum computing the last few weeks, this is kind of in that same vein because today, you know, your identities belong to organizations, whether it's Microsoft or Facebook or Twitter or Apple. And that is all fine. Although security professionals tell you like generally you shouldn't use the like sign in with Facebook or sign in with Apple thing, although Apple's is pretty good. Um, but this is just an interesting idea and I think more to come here. And that's why this is still free today, completely free. Um, if you want to build on decentralized identity, the CIM product, cloud infrastructure entitlement management, specifically cloud Knox that got acquired and is now uh, Microsoft Entra permissions management. This is really cool because I think in so many different cloud infrastructure environments, AWS, GCP, Azure, um, it's really hard. And, and there are solutions like Azure blueprint and, and that sort of thing to help drive consistency and permissioning. But I guarantee you, you have like ridiculous permissions creep in your cloud infrastructure environment, like guaranteed. And so, you know, this is one possible solution there. Like Andy said, there are competitors. This is probably definitely a place to look because I think of identity is so fundamental to security posture, because after all, there's a new saying going around that I've seen a lot on LinkedIn is that criminals don't like break in criminals log in like the bad guys. They just log in. They steal creds and log in. And it's super hard to, to find them because it's not anomalous, you know, other than maybe some of the signing characteristics. But hey, if I have valid creds and I can go into your cloud infrastructure and start poking on a whole bunch of stuff, ooh, what's in the SQL database? Hey, what's this firewall set to do? Um, I can wreak some havoc. So definitely like getting that tightened down is a great idea and, and love that in particular. So cool stuff there um, from Microsoft, some new offerings for sure. Under threat intelligence, there were also some announcements. Um, if you're following the acquisitions path, Microsoft purchased Risk IQ back in 2021, and there were two products that have now been rebranded for the Microsoft Defender stack that are specifically with threat intelligence. So first off is Microsoft Defender Threat Intelligence, which is what primarily Risk IQ um, specialized in and this is like a competitor to other folks in the space like recorded future but it allows you to have a single repository of critical data sets and a lot of times when security analysts are trying to go and look at iocs of different things within 
their alerts. Like if this IP address popped up or this domain popped up or this file hash is pop is here, like where do I go to find out what uh, that, uh, if that IP is associated with a particular IOC or if that domain is malicious or whatever, you have to go to these different tools. Now, now you have defender threat intelligence, which kind of pulls all that together. So right now uh, there is a free to offer, free offering as well as a paid offering so if you're a microsoft customer there is a free offering where you can just go to ti.defender.com and take a look and there's some articles there that are kind of like what's happening in the industry Um, you can search by ip or dns or even just like a a name of a ransomware group or something like that and it'll just give you some information Um, the paid offering offer gives you a lot more so that's part of threat intel and then the other part of Risk IQ was their attacks, uh, external attack surface management. And that is a tool that continuously discovers and maps your attack surface from external of your organization. So it enables uh, like teams to, to identify unknowns or priority uh, risks, eliminate threats, um, extend your vulnerability and exposure just beyond your firewall There's products out there, and some people may know, like Shodan being one of the more famous ones where it can look at open ports or if your IPs are getting scanned. This is that, but it also can look at your specific domain, domains, your host names, your web pages, your company egress IP blocks, where you can just put that in and it's customized to you. Um, Your who is contacts, your SSL certificates. I mean, there's a lot um, that this can look at and just continuously scan to see if there's any anomalous behavior or if anyone's targeting you. Um, And like I said, there's other ones in this space, like hacker one has an EA SM tool attack, uh, external attack service management, uh, detectify census. I mean, there's a few that are big names in this space and now Microsoft also has one. So, um, you know, take a look at that. Not a whole lot to add to the threat intelligence piece. I mean, that's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, Risk IQ is doing really cool stuff in that space. I think the external attack surface management is interesting. Um, to be honest, you know, even though I do a security podcast, I don't even always know about the like cool new. Uh, what's what's the latest like three or four letter acronym buzzword thingy of the day? And so, tell me if I'm wrong, Andy, but I kind of map this to. Um, Boy, I'm blanking on the name, but there's this really popular tool to kind of port scan your internal environment and come up with uh, um, all of your different vulnerabilities and that sort of thing. And it's been around forever. And we did it in Certified Ethical Hacker. Which one is that? Um. Wow. Now I'm blanking on the <laughs> on it too. Um. But everybody knows that it. it's like it's been around forever. It's this very monolithic thing you stand up, and it scans all your ports, and it comes back with and map. Well, and maps one of them, but I'm thinking like the commercial product. Um, oh, a- anyhow, you you know what I'm talking about. I, I'm just kind of saying, is this kind of like the equivalent of that, but for your external attack surface? I mean, based on the name, that's what it sounds like to me is kind of that same thing, like doing a vulnerability scan and mapping of your external attack surface, everything that is public facing and telling yes. you if it's found anything weird, like, um, you know, in this IP address, maybe this service is open that shouldn't be, or in this web page, there may be this insecure configuration on your HTTP server or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's really interesting. I didn't know that was a thing, although it makes a ton of sense. You would want that um, just as much as you want. Um, Nessus was the product I was thinking of oh. for yeah for the internal thing. Like this is like external Nessus kind of. Um, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And and actually, um, so Nessus has a paid offering as well as a community version. And Qualys is also a big one in that space. Mm-hmm. And those tools, I know, I don't know about Nessus, but Qualys for sure has the ability to st- scan external IP addresses too. So they have a product to do that. Mm-hmm. But this is a, I think, a little bit more than that because it's also all of these other things like. SSL certs, who is contacts, right, absolutely. your specific domains, right? Yeah, that's bigger so. than just port scanning an IP address. Totally, yeah, totally agree because you have all this external attack surface that is different than just exposed hosts to the internet because hopefully you have very few hosts that are exposed, 
but you can have insecure configurations in other ways, you know, SSL certificates that are maybe insecure in some way and in the flags that are set on them. Or again, like your web page itself could have some insecurities or whatever. So that's, that's all very interesting too. I was just trying to kind of think of a way to mentally map it to something a lot of our listeners are familiar with. And I, I think that's, that's kind of there. Although as to your point, there's, there's more here than just, we're going to port scan an IP address, LOL, you know, which is cool. Some announcements in endpoint management as well. You may have missed this. Um, so I dug a little bit deeper. There was a blog that was released. Um, let me see what the, this was. So it, it was this year in April and there wasn't a whole lot of mention. If you read between the lines and, you know, because Adam and I work at Microsoft, I was able to ask some of my peers and some of the PG to figure out what is actually coming up in this. So, this isn't any like news that hasn't been specifically released because it's all there in the blog. You just have to read between the lines, but there are a few, what we would want to call premium add-ons for Intune that are one is available today. And then there are a few that are in the works and coming. So the one that's available today is remote help and that is generally available. It's a little bit more, more robust than the remote assistance that's built into windows. It, the remote help, if you get the add-on for it, it integrates with Endpoint Manager for um, RBAC access. You can explicitly verify the identities that are connecting to your PC. Um, it can integrate with device compliance as well, uh, conditional access rules. So there's a lot of things that it can do that are just beyond just the built-in remote assistance, which does allow people to connect, but sometimes you have elevation issues um, for admin privileges and all that. So that is one of the add-ons in the works. Two of the things that I found that were interesting in this blog that I um, dived a little bit deeper on number one was this endpoint privilege management and don't know a whole lot about it, but I know that it will be something that you can provide granular permissions on a device like admin elevations per app. So a lot of times we grant admin elevation for the device and, and you can do that with different roles within Azure or laps or something like that. But this will be like, if I only need admin permissions for this application, but everything else I don't need admin permissions for this particular privilege management add-on, which is coming. It's, I don't even know if it's in private preview yet, but it's in this blog where they talk about it essentially allows you to have very, very granular escalation privileges assigned. And then the other thing which I found was interesting was it talked about a cloud certificate management solution for PKI or PKI as a service. And it's something that Microsoft is working on because PKI infrastructure can be difficult. It can be confusing. It does require advanced skills if you don't know anything about PKI. So this will allow Microsoft to run the underlying infrastructure for the PKI and give you kind of a nice cloud GUI version where you can just pull your certificates and manage it without having to know anything about the underlying infrastructure. So those are both things that are coming more to come on that. So, you know, um, I just wanted to give everyone a heads up because that, that I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. You know, this is interesting. Um, a couple of these things help solve very particular pain points with endpoint management. And so they are additional premium add-ons for Intune, but they, they solve some pain points for, for administrators. In fact, um, you know, just having a, a built in remote assistance solution to the platform is really helpful and having it integrate with like our back with endpoint manager is just very slick and very seamless. And so this is, this is, Again, you know, you're probably paying for another solution a day, like uh, a Bombgar or something like that, um, or, or some of the uh, log log man. Yeah, and and so this is just an easier way to do that, and it's it's all integrated. So that's really nice. I will say in particular the cloud certificate management that always comes up anytime somebody wants to stand up Intune since like the beginning of time. Uh, one of the biggest sticking points, and it's not like insurmountable, but it's just challenging is setting up that PKI ability to deliver certificates to your endpoints because you generally need to make it publicly accessible somehow. Azure AD app proxy is a great way to do that, by the way. 
Um, but there's just work involved. There's security. There's multiple stakeholders to engage with because you usually need infrastructure, infosec, endpoint management. So there's like multiple teams all have to work together to get that stood up. And so making that into an as a service offering, I think is really compelling because it's something that is so often challenging for IT departments to do on their own. So that's pretty cool. Vulnerability management, there were some announcements in this area recently. So vulnerability management has been a part of Microsoft Defender Endpoint P2 or the E5 version uh, for a very long time. It's been a, a year or more at least, um, but there were some extensions and there's now an add-on for vulnerability management. The original one is still there. If you're an E5 customer or a Defender for Endpoint P2 customer, you're still going to get that. And most uh, endpoint protection um, competitors in the space offer something similar. Like if you have their product installed on your endpoint, they're going to do uh, this device discovery, vulnerability assessment, configuration assessments of those devices, software inventory and assessments. And so that's that's all there still. The add-ons allow the ability to take enforcement and block vulnerable apps. So if an app becomes vulnerable, you can just say, don't run it anymore. It can do browser extension assessments, digital certificate assessments, and even network share analysis, like um, configuration assessments of your network shares. As people are connecting to them, it can look at the permissions of those like and give you uh, recommendations such as, you should remove the shares from the root folder or remove shares, uh, write permissions set to everyone, stuff like that, where it's just looking at the the permission assess, uh, assessments for network shares. So a lot of cool things. Um, the base stuff is still there, but then there's this new add-on, uh, which you can either buy um, standalone if you don't have a vulnerability management, which will include everything, or just the add-on if you already are an E5 or P2 customer. Very cool. So we're going to move on to threat experts, which is another rebranding. And I was confused by this. So if you are confused, <laughs> I'm here to help you sort through this. Um, I was even on a call this morning talking with some of my peers and it was confusing for them. So I have the information streamlined. And so we're just going to go over it real quick. In Defender for Endpoint, if you are a Defender for Endpoint customer, there was something previously called Microsoft Threat Experts Targeted Attack Notification. That has been rebranded already. It is just called Endpoint Attack Notifications, and it just looks at your endpoints. And what that is, is if you are a Defender for Endpoint customer, it is a managed threat hunting service. You do have to apply for it, so it's not turned on by default but you have to apply and that's more for scaling up the service and making sure that we have enough people to cover all of the different notifications. And what that'll do is it'll forward some of the notifications to threat experts, and then they'll give you a targeted notification like, Hey, this is a critical one. You should take a look at this one. And there's no additional cost. If you're a customer, you just got to go and apply. It's within the advanced settings inside of Defender for Endpoint. There was something that used to be called Experts on Demand. That's no longer there. The new thing, which has gone generally available this year in June, is called Defender Experts for Hunting. And what that is, is there's a little bit of difference. The Experts on Demand used to be where your alerts would get forwarded to like a shared workspace and everything was obfuscated. And then you could like consult an expert and they would look at that particular alert and give you a little bit more insight on it. That has been rolled into this experts for hunting. So that's no longer available, but the feature is still there. You can still consult an expert, but now it is tenant specific. So if you choose to subscribe to defenders expert for hunting you are granting more permission and it is tenant wide so it's not just these endpoint notifications but it could get uh, purview notifications or azure ad identity protection notifications stuff like that and they're also actively looking 
for threats, not just like seeing the alerts and then you consult them. They're actively looking for it um, as well as you get two calls per month with experts. So there's even more uh, enhancements that are coming. Um, I don't want to give anything away because there's more coming at Ignite, um, which I found out. So, you know, stay tuned to Ignite. But right now, this particular feature is uh, GA and you could take a look at that and do like a trial if you're looking for kind of like a managed sock, but I, I would say it's a little bit lighter because it's just Microsoft specific. So here we have a name change where it really makes sense because the name changes to really clarify the specific scope of the offering. So Andy mentioned Microsoft threat experts targeted attack notifications became endpoint attack notifications. Notice the change there endpoint. That's to highlight that those are specific to just the endpoint protection platform, just the EDR and antivirus platform, you know, as an example. And then the second thing Andy talked about when, if they sounded similar defender experts for hunting, think of that as not just EDR, that's the whole XDR platform. So they're doing that proactive hunting against all of your XDR um, alerts and incidents and that. So tracking a threat from email to identity, cloud identity, on-prem identity, CASB, as well as endpoint protection platform, right? And so that's kind of the nuance there, the difference between the two. Um, the endpoint one is no additional cost. There is an additional cost for defender experts for hunting. However, as Andy mentioned, that also includes those two ask an expert things or whatever they're called now, where you can consult an expert and they will actually look at kind of, like you said, obfuscated anonymized data from your tenant to help you through a specific attack. Hey, have you seen this before? How has Microsoft handled this? And so what's cool about either one of those, either the targeted, the endpoint attack notifications or defender experts for hunting is you know, Microsoft has hunters who are hunting across not just our environment, which is one of the most attacked environments in the world, but many customer environments as well. And so as they're doing those threat hunting queries, if you opt into those services or subscribe to those services, essentially they're going to be hunting for your um, tenants information as well. And if they get a hit, they're going to tell you, hey, we saw this there. We saw um, whatever, you know, sign of activity from Nobelium or whatever attack group is the flavor of the month, you know in there. So really cool stuff there. And then the ability to consult an expert on demand, even though it's not called that anymore, that was a really good name uh, is helpful as well. So cool stuff there. I know a lot of other vendors that do this for their EDR and XDR and Microsoft does as well. Um, you know, advantage of Microsoft, I think would be a Microsoft is a really holistic XDR platform when Forrester did a new wave on that Microsoft was uh, upper right quadrant there. Um, and also just the fact that Microsoft deals with such a volume of threats and alerts and incidents. Uh, the number goes up every time I hear it. I think it's 24 trillion signals a day now, like threat signals that come in to our, to our cyber defense operations center. So definitely you benefit from scope scale with Microsoft. So really um, some great offerings there as well, if you want to up your game. And and by the way, it does call out in the documentation, like who this is targeted towards. This isn't targeted like, we don't want to sock. We want to outsource the whole thing. Like that's still, you're going to go to an MSSP. This is for like, we have a sock, but we want to augment it with even more intelligence, human capital, that sort of thing. And now this is basically, you can take all of the power of Microsoft's threat hunting and infuse your sock with it. So that's really cool, but you do need kind of a sock practice in state in place for this to make sense. And then the final thing is app governance. So this is an add on for the defender for cloud apps, our CASB solution, and it's the ability to govern third party and SaaS apps. Um, it's really designed for OAuth apps that have access to M365 data through the Microsoft graph API. And it can do things like limit or revoke non-compliant or malicious apps. It can see anomalies into like app activity. It gives you full visibility on how apps are being used and how users are sharing your sensitive data and the ability to govern those actions through policy. And one of the cool things, I was on a call recently where the product group was talking about some of the enhancements that they've made specifically to this, and they're coming out with something called SaaS app configuration 
uh, assessments. So you can link up to a third party application and they will look at whether or not that application is configured correctly. So the, one of the first ones that's being released into public preview is Salesforce. So you could link up Salesforce to your Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps solution. And then it'll look at whether or not you have configured Salesforce correctly based on best practices, like how many admins do you have? Did, are they over permission? Stuff like that, right? Um, I'm not an expert on what Salesforce <laughs> configuration is supposed to look like, but that's, you know, if I didn't know, I would maybe get something like this to look at it and give me insight on actions I can take to make it better and more secure. So I thought that was interesting. Again, this is one of the new things. And the purpose of this show really was not to say, hey, you know, go and buy all these things. It's really, I think a lot of times as security practitioners, we're so busy in the weeds that we don't get a chance to see what else is out there. And the purpose is more like if you're looking for something, just know that, you know, Microsoft is continually innovating and coming out with new things. Some of these things, they're fairly new and they may not have a ton of features, but from what I've seen and the investments and money that Microsoft is putting into making these things better, I mean, it's exponential improvement over, you know, a very short period of time compared to other companies out there. So, you know, if one of these piques your interest, just reach out and get a demo from one of your Microsoft reps. So you're talking about that uh, app governance piece for cloud app security and, and like the SaaS application configuration. You know, I, I thought of the class of product of like CSPM, you know, cloud security posture management, where we look at, or, or other vendors do as well, like Prisma as an example. Uh, we'll look at your your cloud infrastructure environment and say, hey, you know, your VM is con configured in an insecure manner. Your SQL database has these issues. Your firewalls should be set differently. Your network security groups, you know, on and on. And and that's like CSPM. I feel like this is like SSPM, you know, like SaaS security posture management, essentially, or whatever the, you know, hot buzzword is for this. But that's another great idea because there's plenty of SaaS applications, Salesforce being one of them, where CRM is so complicated and there are so many settings in there that I'd be willing to bet like InfoSec, you know, has really barely looked at it because even they can't wrap their brain around it. I mean, I know as someone who has stood up like a, a Salesforce sandbox instance and connected it to my Azure AD just to like vet that it works and do like a third party app configuration. Holy smokes. Are there a lot of knobs in that admin center in Salesforce? It is bonkers. So this is a great idea. I'm I'm excited to see that. And I'm I'm sure there's other vendors are doing it too. But like you said, you know, some some benefits to the Microsoft approach. And and certainly if you listen to this show, you're probably not a Microsoft hater because you know where Andy and I work. But at this point, like even if you are, um, you know, Microsoft's the largest security vendor in the world at this point. So it at least needs to be in the conversation when you're, when you're evaluating products. And again, like we try to be as agnostic on this show as possible and always make sure we give a lot of credit and a lot of call outs to all the competitive solutions in the space. You know, I often say InfoSec's the team sport, you know, we all get better. A rising tide lifts all ships as we share information as, as competitors push each other to get better. And that benefits all of us. So, you know, today they say, talk about what you know. This is stuff we know because we get paid to know it. So it's valuable to share with you. And I know sometimes we as InfoSec practitioners, we're scared of like, quote unquote, being sold to. But you can just learn about things in an educational way. Like, what is this? What does it do? How does it work? Like, that doesn't have to be a sales pitch. That can just be educational. So you understand either this new class of product or you understand what competitors are doing in this space compared to your incumbent solution. Determine if you have gaps in your security posture, on and on. So I think sometimes we get scared of having, like, product conversations or learning about new things because we don't want to be sold to. But it certainly helps us understand where our opportunities lie and how we can get better. So hopefully you learned something today. I know I did because I don't know what we're called the title of the show. And I think you had pitched like beyond E five, but these are all components that aren't necessarily in the E five suite. They're different premium add-ons to various products that Microsoft offers. And so 
I don't know if they've ever all been pulled together in one space before. This was fun for us to research and do. I mean, Andy did most of the research, let's be honest, but still to talk about it and, and do a show on it. So again, hopefully you learned something. And uh, I know I did. And there's some interesting products out here um, from Microsoft, and I'm sure some, some competitive solutions as well in these same spaces that can help you up your security game. Yeah, I called it Beyond E5 because it's more of like, if you already have the basics down, you have an EDR solution, you have advanced security gateway, you have an identity provider, SSO and MFA, you know, what next, right? Like some of these acronyms, like you talked about the acronym of the day, <laughs> C-I-E-M, like I, I didn't know what that was and now I kind of do, right? Cloud infrastructure entitlement management or EASM or app governance, whatever we want to call it, like um, SaaS app posture management <laughs> or <laughs> cloud, po you know, cloud security um, posture management. Those things, all those things are different categories that are kind of extending beyond the basics of just managing your user identities, managing your endpoints and, and basic servers. So um, this to me was like, you know, whether or not you go with Microsoft because there are other competitive offers in uh, vendors in this space. It's just more of an education of these are other things. Once you get past the basics that you can be looking at and doing. And if you haven't, maybe you start thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And that's our show for this week. Thanks for listening and watching as always. Our contact information will be in the show notes. If you have any questions or topics you want us to talk about in future shows. Thanks. We'll talk to you guys next week. Thank you for listening to the Blue Security Podcast. Please check out the show notes, catch up on episodes you may have missed, and subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Find Andy on Twitter at AJAW0 and Adam at AJ Brewer. See you at our next episode.